That was rain at home. Chicago 5-3 and 4 at home. Nagasato. Plays it outside. Short. Steps into the box. Sends it. And she's going to find the back corner for the first goal of the afternoon. Casey Short gets the Red Stars on the board first here in Bridgeview. What a way to make a statement, right? Right as you're coming up on the deadline of... You are a good enough player. You're seeing that with a couple of these different players. Vasconcelos plays it to the far side. LB, and that will go in for Chicago as they now have three on the afternoon. What an afternoon for the Red Stars. And Brooke Elby getting her first goal of the year. who has the third goal, that one coming in the 69th minute. Lynn Williams, who had the first goal. That one back in the 45th minute. Williams now looking to distribute, goes across, headed down and in. And once again, North Carolina, Courage continues to score that one from Leah Pruitt. As Pruitt finds the back of the net in her first career goal in NWSL action. And that is exactly why Paul Riley drafted Leah Pruitt. He talked about it when we prepped for the draft back in January, how she could make special things happen. Williams from the right, sending it in front and just a great little low flick. She gets down to get her head on it. That's gonna be so hard for a keeper to read. Fourth goal for North Carolina Courage. Well, last week you saw Julia Spetsmark, the Swede, get her first goal of her career in NWSL play. And now that going to Leah Pruitt as Murray will come off and Kaya Simon will come on. Kaya Simon making her first appearance of the 2019 campaign. Ball camp for one minute of stoppage time will be added on. Into the box, headed down, headed up, and then headed in for the first goal of the evening. And Lynn Williams there for the North Carolina Courage. It looked like a little bit of chaos in the box for Houston, and Lynn Williams able to capitalize that time. So close to going into the locker room, scoreless, and it did look like a little bit of miscommunication between Amber Brooks Jane Campbell in the back. We'll see what the replay shows. Long ball in. McDonald up getting ahead. Jane was almost there with her hands. Brooks in front of her with the head, and that's when Jane was no longer in a position to make the save. Well, Lynn Williams couldn't connect on the penalty, and then that time makes amends for it on the header. second minute. The wall assembles. And Heath can put it in from here, no question about it. Tobin Heath with one goal on the season, ships it in looking for Sinclair, still lose, the extra touch and the goal for Portland! Kaylin Sheridan chased down Sinclair. Meanwhile, wide open was the center back, Emily Sonnet. Sonnet did, had a Pretty good roll in Carly Lloyd's second goal for Sky Blue FC, but that's a really well-designed set piece for the Thorns. Heath, who you have to respect her ability to shoot it in a corner from there, just puts it right over the top. There's Sinclair getting on the end of it. And Sonnet went in unmarked and a very composed Sinclair. I think Sky Blue may have thought it rolled off her arm. I didn't think so. A very composed Sinclair with an easy pass, and Sonnet won't get many easier goals than that one. That was the second pick. Here's Carly Lloyd. French dives for it. Lloyd with an open net. Carly Lloyd 
chips it in for a second goal. Sky Blue with a commanding 2-0 lead over Portland. And that's just a bad giveaway in the back for the Thorns. And if you're going to give the ball away to somebody, you don't want it to be Carly Lloyd. Franch did a nice job to come out and disturb Lloyd's first shot, but Lloyd picked it up at an empty goal, and she's not going to miss those very often. Carly Lloyd with a tough angle, but what an exceptional chip shot. We'll take another look at it. Lloyd right past Sonnet. French dives, and on the empty net again, tough angle. And Catherine Reynolds sprinting back. Lloyd still finds a way to get it done. One of the most creative goal scorers in the world. Dean Cole. Done. Sends one across, and that's going to find the back. Crystal Dunn now with four goals on the year. She was able to get by Murray and able to get her left foot on it and time the target, but Crystal Dunn, Coach Riley talked about how dangerous she can be and she is starting to show it off this year. And again, service from Hinkle with that left foot, Dunn able to make the turn from almost an impossible angle. Look how that came so close to bumping off the post or even Campbell getting a hand on it. What a shot from Crystal Dunn. Not off a set piece, this one, but fourth goal of the season, leads the league right before she departs for Women's World Cup camp. Uh, the chill's gotta affect the game too, right? Mm -hmm. Definitely makes a factor, and then you add in the win with that chill. Kerr with a little bit of space. And coming out was Williams to make sure Kirk could not get there. Nagasato trying to send it over Williams, and she's going to find the back for the second goal of the game. This one coming from Yuki Nagasato. Following that two-goal performance last week, what a goal for Nagasato. What teamwork. So they left eight points on the table. Ironically enough, they took five of eight, or five of nine rather, against the North Carolina Courage. Very interesting how the tables turn, especially as we get into the middle of the season. Press makes some space for herself, slots one home, and it's Utah Royals FC to open the scoring. And of course, it's none other than Kristen Press. And what a fantastic job by Press to take that ball down in such a narrow space. But at the end of the day, I think Haley Kopmeyer should have made that save. Here we go. We'll have another look at it. Absolutely fantastic work from the striker. Three defenders around her and just manages to create an opportunity for herself at the top of the box. Maimon's going to get the assist on that too for her first NWSL assist, but Kopmeyer kind of took a stutter step almost to her right. Didn't really get herself in the right position. That she is a bit underrated and that because of her hat trick last week, now everyone's talking about her as we see Caitlin Ford on the right flank, crosses it. It's still loose in front of the net, flicks it back. A goal for Tobin Heath and Portland equalizes. That was a fantastic finish by Tobin Heath with the back heel. She had Sheridan going one way, and she somehow had that sixth sense to flick the ball to the opposite direction of where Sheridan was going, and this game's tied up. What a sensational offensive performance from Portland just in the last two minutes and change. Heath had a goal two weeks ago in Orlando that I thought was kind of an accident that maybe she slipped and it just kind of worked out in her favor. That goal right there was 100% Tobin Heath magic.